I wanted to, if you could, elaborate on uh, um, another concept, both Dr. Calvin Robinson, when I asked him about that. This is the brother who introduced me to this research, mm. Dr. Calvin Robinson. Mm -hmm. And um, also Professor Lebo gave some insight on this. But um, the Earth, which is uh, on a 24 degree uh, axis, mm -hmm. Uh, the sun, and I'll just sun here, but as the earth goes around the sun, the rays of the sun hit the pain. earth along the equator mm -hmm. most directly. Yes. You know, hit it, um, yeah. uh, and the earth, of, of course, uh, Africa, right. uh, the equator passes directly uh, through the center. Through the center of Africa, of yes. Africa. Which is and directly below, essentially, right there, where they found the highest trends. Right. Uh, and also, uh, Africa sits in the center. Of yes. Earth. So that the rays of the sun, life rather, is in the rays of the sun. If, mm -hmm. you, if, you, if you block off the rays of the sun from hitting anything, it dies. Yes. If you put a blanket over grass where the sun can't hit it, it dies. Mm -hmm. There can be no life without, without the, the sun. sun. So, Life is in the rays of the sun. Exactly. So if you have the rays of the sun hitting the earth most directly along the equator, mm -hmm. and Africa, you know, is the, the equator passes through the middle of Africa, then you will maximize the potential, or you will maximize the environment for sustaining life and any evolutionary process of life, mm -hmm. because you have the maximum life rays hitting the earth. And that has something to do with humans evolving in Africa and this continuity of human life uh, reflected in Africa and reflected in the nine of the twelve strands mm -hmm. of DNA, which is his explanation for why you have nine strand, uh, a nine series of DNA within Africans, uh, the rays of the sun is diminished, you know. Yeah, on that trajectory, yes. Yeah, they don't hit the earth as directly as they do mm -hmm. uh, in the maximization of life there. And I want you to kind of speak to that in terms of uh, that explanation. Okay, um, first things first, we have to go back much farther than, what, than the history of what they are speaking about at this time. The history of the planet is not what we see according to the continental divides today. I'm going to first put up this particular sign here and it's an elongated picture of the earth. Mm -hmm. And know that before the continental divide that what we know as South, Af South America and Africa were once one large continental mass. Mm -hmm. And that this whole mass that you see here, Asia and everything, all of this were together. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the earth was not at its six cycle or its two working through the four. It was working on a more, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'll get them for you. The ellipsis and the angle to which the sun was hitting it was not as intense. Because that's the time when they call it the Garden of Eden. All right? The temperature was the same around every place on the planet. That's when it was all together. Right, that's when these continental drifts here were not separated. Mm -hmm. They were all together. And essentially, most of this land mass, and you see here, was not separated. The angle of the Earth shifted when it got hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? The separation that we see here, where you see... Uh, Mexico and so forth, this area here is now under a lot of controversy as to whether or not this was the area that the Africans originated in. See now, this is why I'm saying what I'm saying to you because a lot of the information that we're studying as Africans is old, antiquated information because this European is digging all over the planet looking for himself and he's finding us and we can't, we, can't dis, we can't just dismiss any of the information because Shekhan Tadiop 
Dr. Van Sertema and them are coming up with information all about Africa, which is fine. But Africa was not Africa at the time we were coming up in our high civilizations. What became Africa after Africinus, the guy that the Roman uh, named it, uh, the black Roman was named uh, general, this is not Africa. We have to completely uh, uh, rechart the consciousness that we are using. The particular blinders, the particular field of, uh, of, of, of awareness that we're using to try to find ourselves, we can't use that anymore. It's antiquated, it's not for use for black folks anymore. If there has been a great, within all of our writings, a great continental cataclysm, we must go back to that point where we were joined first before we were split mm -hmm. and then study what happened because in the southern parts of what we call the Americas today live or are evidence of what the primary pyramids looked like before they went to Africa. That the step pyramid that you see in ancient Africa was essentially a copy of the ones that you saw in the Mesoamerican place. Um, in Mexico, in Mesoamerica, and in America itself, they're finding pyramids. They found pyramids in China, pyramids in South America, that predate the older pyramids that you see as the Saqqara pyramids in Africa. Now, we're not looking at it and saying that it might not have been up here. It, it might be one landmass and one set of people that did the whole damn thing. What would be evidence of people traveling? Yeah, but I'm saying, we travel back there to find that. It's not the evidence of people. We found ourselves over there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we found Nubian heads over there. What were Nubian heads yeah. doing over there? Yeah. Wait a minute, they found one in Brooklyn. I did a lecture where this guy was digging up and excavating to do some work on his house and came up with a three-ton head sitting up underneath his house. Black as you wanted. The same black Olmec head was found in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So we have been all over this planet. They're finding black people up here in China. Yes. Yeah. We're finding black people. Wait a minute. They found... Huh? Why not? That's what I'm saying. So they found it out down here in India that a man named Bodhidharma walked 8,000 miles into central China, a black man, and established a place called Shaolin. The Shaolin Temple. Where along that 8,000 mile track, he studied the animals, Learn their ways, the serpent, the 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 the, the, um, the tiger, tiger, and all the, the the eagle. He studied them and their ways and developed a particular type fighting style. Now, over here you see Olmec heads, and the Mayan people say that the Olmec were their fathers and mothers. And when you look at the Olmec, of course, the white man says to you that that's the, we had to make the thick lips because we had to make them weather strong, you know, weather weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherfuckers are something else. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the same thing with this guy named David Icke, that everybody been buying this thing about the reptilians and their yeah. thing. Now, he got some information on the, the Illuminati, but he's a racist. Yes, he is. Now, if he says that white people came down from the Caucasus Mountains and built all the civilizations that you see that out here, that everybody digging up, I'm trying to figure out why these white people didn't put their face on all these thousands of statues. You see what I'm saying? If you built the damn thing, wouldn't you have put up your own damn face? That's right. What do you think? You would think. But there's no evidence of him anywhere, but he's coming down to try to steal it through the New Age movement. But again, let's go back to this. At the time when the earth was, was on a specific ellipsis, the whole earth was surrounded by what is known as a um, compressed hydrogen envelope, which created a ha an atmosphere that was perfect. There was no death. Death was by choice. You just wanted to leave your body, you left it. There was no disease. The animals and the humans connected telepathically. Nice as well.